Hey, hey board, board physicists. Question 1.1. Part A asks us to calculate the average of j squared and the square of the average j. The ages are given as as a, as follows in the table. The average of j is given by the following equation 1.7 and since we have the outcome j and the frequency of the outcome in the data, we will use the first expression. So we multiply each outcome, which is the age, by the frequency n of j, then divide by the total frequency n like this. And we get the value to be the value of the average to be 21. But part A is also but part A is actually asking for the square of the average, so we get 441 as the final answer. The other expression is the average of the j squared. So we get the general equation for the average of j, but we replace j with j squared. Substitu substituting the numbers, we should get 459.571 as the final answer. Part B asks us to find delta j and then use it to work out the standard deviation sigma using equation 1.11, which is actually the equation for sigma squared, which is the variance of the distribution. So equation 1.11 gives us sigma squared as the average of delta j squared, but can also be expressed as this sum. So first, delta j which is a measure of how far each outcome deviates from the average that we calculated in part A, which is 21. So we work this out for each outcome. And then we're able to use the summation ex expression to calculate the variance. So plugging in the numbers, we get these. We get this value of 18.571. But the question asks us to work out the standard deviation, so we do the square root to find the value 4.309. Part C asks us to use the equation 1.12 to check the value of the variance we calculated in part B is the same as the one we can calculate using the values from A. So plugging in the numbers, we can see that the values of the variance are consistent. Problem 1.2 asks us to consider the first 25 digits in the decimal expansion of pi, but it gives it to us up to 6 digits. Part A says if you selected one number at random from this set, what are the probabilities of getting each of the 10 digits? So if pi was tw to 25 decimal places this, then we start with the probability of getting 0, which is 0. Then we go up to 9 like this. Part B says, what is the most probable? Which is the mode? So that would be 3, so we can see it's the most common number. Then it also asks us, what is the median? And here we write out all the numbers in ascending order and see that the middle one is 4. Finally, part B asks us also to work out the average of the value, so we use the general summation equation to calculate this and we get 4.72. Problem 1.3. The needle on a broken car speedometer is free to swing and bounces perfectly off the pins at either end, so that if we give it a flip, it is equally likely to come to rest at any angle between 0 and pi. Part A says, what is the probability density rho of theta? We know that this is equal to some constant at an angle between 0 and pi, but 0 at any other angles. We also know the total probability is always 1, so integrating the constant rho of theta with respect to theta between the limits 0 and pi would give us 1. So this lets us find the value for rho of theta as 1 over pi. We're also asked to sketch this, so it would just be a straight line with the value 1 over pi from 0 to pi and then 0 for all the, other, the rest of the angles. Part B asks us to calculate the expectation of theta, the expectation of theta squared and sigma, the standard deviation. So first, the general equation for the expectation value can be applied where we would integrate from minus infinity to plus infinity. But in this case, we know the probability density is the constant 1 over pi between 0 and pi. So we just substitute this in and integrate. We'll find the, f the expectation value of theta to be pi over 2. 
We do the same procedure for the expectation of theta squared, just replacing theta by theta squared, and we'll find that to be pi squared over 3. Then to calculate sigma squared, we use this expression. This is the equation from 1.12, and these values, we have just calculated them, so we just substitute it in, and we'll find that sigma squared is pi squared over 2, but for the standard deviation, we have to do the square root, so we'll find this, the final answer to be pi over 2. To root 3. Part C asks us to work out the expectation of sine theta, cos theta, and cos squared theta. So again, we use a general equation for the expectation value. So for sine theta, we just integrate with the same limits as before, and we get 2 over pi. Same for cos theta, but we get 0. And then for cos squared theta, we use the same procedure, but we also have to use the double angle trig identity, so we get the value 1 over t. Problem 1.4 We consider the same device as the previous problem, but this time we're interested in the x coordinate of the needle point, that is the shadow or projection of the needle on the horizontal line. Part A asks us what the probability of rho of x is. It also asks us to graph this rho of x from minus r to plus r, where r is the length of the needle. It tells us the total probability is 1, which we know is always the case. It gives us the hint that from problem 1.3, we know the probability that theta is in a given range. So the question is, what interval dx corresponds to the interval d theta? We know this from using polar coordinates, so since the needle is at an angle theta, then its x coordinate is r cos theta. So if the angle changes by d theta, its x coordinate changes by minus r sine theta d theta. By differentiation. R sine theta can also be expressed as r multiplied by square root of 1 minus cos squared theta using the Pythagorean identity. For the probability density rho of theta d theta it can be written as a function of x by substituting our, ex our expression for d theta and using the Pythagorean identity like such. So we can f get a final expression of rho of x as 1 over pi multiplied by the square root of r squared minus x squared only for x between minus r and plus r. Then we graph rho of x between minus 2r and plus 2r. Notice how it's 0 outside of x larger than r and x smaller than minus r. The function, the function can be graphed using any graphing website like Desmos, but you can also see that as x tends towards r, the function tends towards 1 over 0, which is infinity, and also at the minimum, when x is 0, the function is a constant. We can check our expression for rho of x by confirming the total probability is 1. So we integrate rho of x with respect to x between minus r and r. The graph shows us rho of x is symmetric by the y-axis, so we know the function is even, and in general when we integrate an even function with symmetric limits, we can follow this rule where we divide the limit about the origin and multiply the integral by 2 before integrating, which simplifies our integral and we can see the total probability does add up to 1. Part B asks us to compute the expectation values of x, expectation value of x squared, and to find sigma the standard deviation. Just like problem 1.3, we can use a general equation for the expectation value, but this time our probability density is not a constant, but a function of x, so we need to integrate. But in this case, this, uh, this calculation becomes simple if we notice that x is an odd function. Then we need to remember that the product of an even and odd function is an odd function. Since generally when we integrate an odd function with symmetric limits, the value is 0, we find the expectation value of x is 0. For x squared, we replace x with x squared in the general equation for the expectation value. Then notice x squared is an even function. Since the product of two even functions is another even function, we can use the general rule for integrals of even functions with symmetric limits, like before where we change the limits and multiply the integral by 2. Now we will show how this integral is computed. So we perform a trig substitution, x equals r sine u. We differentiate to work out dx. We use the Pythagorean identity in the denominator and we find that cos u cancels. So we're left with r squared sine squared in the integral. And we use the 
double angle trig identity to simplify this integral before integrating. Then we substitute u back in before we plug the limits in to find the expectation value of x squared as r squared over 2. The next part of B is the calculate sigma standard deviation. We first calculate the variance which is given by equation 1.12 so we can use the, the values we've just calculated and then do the square root to find sigma as r over root 2. Then for the final part of B it asks us how we can use part C of problem 1.3 to obtain these results. This is because x is equal to r cos theta, so we can get the expectation value of x by equating it to the expectation value of r cos theta, which is 0 from problem 1.3. And the same goes for the expectation value of x squared and the value for sigma. 1. Board physicists. Board physicists.